Welcome, everyone. My guest today is reporter Brooklyn Hahn to talk about inventory shortages across the country, especially in California. Brooklyn, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. I um, really wanted to talk about one of your stories, which was on inventory in California. So this is a story inventory across the nation is just, it's in some places it's at all time lows. Like I believe in California, which is why we did the story, even across the whole country, we just have really low inventory. So in some places it's not as low as last year, which was the all time low, but in California it is. So let's talk about that and, and tell me what some of the stats you uncovered for the story are. Absolutely. Yeah. The inventory across the country is pretty, it's a dire situation right now, but the inventory in California is approaching, um, you know, some of the lowest levels we have seen. Um, it's not quite at the bottom where it was uh, like in January of 2022, um, but it's it's pretty low, especially for this time of year where, you know, we're seeing a lot more activity in the housing market on both the sell side and the buy side. You know, school is ending and this is the time of year to, to move if you're looking to relocate um, and many people are, you know, looking to do that right now. But this uh, this time last year, so in 2022, we were seeing a really big increase um, in inventory. Uh, if you look at graphs and charts from last year, it's kind of you know shooting straight up. We're seeing um, you know weekly increases in inventory of you know two to four thousand new listings hitting the market each week, which is you know, pretty sizable and significant. And it definitely, you know, helped uh, dig us out of the hole that we were in, you know, in January of 2022. And, you know, getting back to a more, a healthier inventory situation, um, you know, it still wasn't great, but it was a lot better in like uh, July and August of last year. But this year we have not seen that kind of giant spike and takeoff. Um, we've actually seen inventory pretty much decrease consistently since the start of the year out in California. Um, and as of May 6th, so earlier this month, it was lower, the inventory count in California was lower than it was a year ago. So um, as of May 6th, the single family uh, housing inventory out in California was at 26,627 homes, which was about 300 fewer homes than a year ago. Um, and the inventory as we've hit um, May 12th has decreased yet again. Um, just a little bit, but it has and it is now, you know, again, well below where it was a year ago by about 2,000 homes, which is pretty significant, especially with so few inven so few homes on the market right now. Um, you know, if we look back to May 2019, so pre-pandemic, there were over 60,000 homes on the market. Um, so we're, we're at half that, uh, less than half that actually. So it's pretty, it's a tough situation. And, you know, it's, it's tough across the state in speaking with different real estate professionals um, from, you know, different counties and metro areas across California. But in speaking uh, with Ryan Lundquist, who is a uh, residential real estate appraiser and market analyst out in the Sacramento area. You know, he was saying that, you know, on paper, it looks like transaction volume from 2007, except in 2007, there were 10 months of inventory on the market. And right now there's less than a month of inventory on the market. So there are buyers, people are scooping up homes, but there's just not enough homes to sustain the demand. And so there, you know, aren't many transactions happening right now. Um, and obviously that's tough for everyone in the real estate industry, you know, from appraisers to title agents to uh, mortgage originators and mortgage lenders and real estate agents, of course. So it's, and it's tough across the state, as I said. There was some good news. I was speaking with uh, Gretchen Pearson, who is the broker owner of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Drysdale Properties, um, which has a lot of offices throughout the northern half of the state. And she has brokers uh, and agents bringing on quite a few properties over the next couple of weeks. But 
you know, it's just a drop in the bucket for what the the area needs for inventory right now to meet the demand that they're seeing. I think the the really interesting thing that the stat that you said about, you know, in 2019, inventory levels in California at this time of year were over 60,000 homes compared to 26,000 homes, a little bit over 26 right now. And yes, we did see a spike last year, but that was only coming off the really, really low 2021. And, and we still look back at 2022 as having some of the lowest inventory on record. So we are trending from a very low bar. And so if we can't even hit it, and, and this is what really um, brought our attention to the story was the Altos research data, which um, is so valuable because it can track weekly inventory numbers as well as, you know, what homes sold for and days on market, all sorts of things. But um, it really piqued our interest because we're like, wow, it fell below last year. And last year was like <laughs> the all-time low in California. It's just, it's crazy. And this actually, you know, it it mirrors what we're seeing across the country um, in our housing wire, in our housing market tracker. That's a weekly um, tracker that Logan does. And total active listings for last week, they only grew by 662 like not even a thousand. And, you know, that's just been the case all of this spring. We only, it was only two weeks ago that we finally saw an uptick that we actually had some increase in inventory. So to me, this is one of the biggest stories in housing right now, because it's driving to your point, all of the other things about home prices. It's, and the fact that there's just so few transactions. Absolutely. Yeah. It's definitely a nationwide issue. I did a story earlier this year Um, kind of as we were heading into what is traditionally the spring selling season, talking to agents across the country about what they were expecting to see. And, you know, a lot of them were expecting to see an uptick of activity, but they were already concerned about inventory. And this was like back in February. Um, And obviously that concern was definitely warranted and this is still an issue. Um, But yeah, with prices, because there are so few homes, we are seeing a lot of bidding wars. Um, And, you know, a lot of agents are saying that it has a feel similar to some of the 2020 and 2021 housing markets that were just really, really competitive. Um, And obviously, it's hard to tell that if you just look at, you know, the number of transaction sides happening right now. But, you know, homes are still getting multiple offers. And, you know, there are very few homes for buyers to pick from. So they're having to be, you know, less selective again, as they were, um, you know, at the height of the market in 2020 and 2021. Yeah. I, you know what? Um, James Kleiman, our managing editor, did a story about New Jersey. So especially um, suburban New Jersey and and the surrounding area. And after th- there was a, a pic on, um, there was a picture on social media, where this guy was uh, standing at li- in a line at an open house, there was about 50 people in line for this open house. And this was in uh, Laurelwood, New Jersey, I believe. And, you know, people are like, what? I mean, this is like, this is a flashback to the pandemic, but that story is uh, the pandemic housing frenzy never went away in these markets. And he looks at New Jersey and Connecticut and Massachusetts. And so just for New Jersey, the median list price of a house last week was 565000 Whereas in May 2020, it was 425,000. And single family inventory last week is just 8,500, about 8,500, where three years ago it was 21,000. So it really mirrors exactly what we're seeing, um, those kind of percentages in California, right? And, you know, he talked about the fact that, you know, the housing fever is even higher in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. And in Connecticut, you have single family inventory dropped 80% in the past six years, while prices, understandably, because there's, you know, there's so much demand have increased by 44%. So it is a wild story. Absolutely. Yeah. I've been following some of the action in my local housing market here in uh, Southern New Hampshire, where I'm based. And, you know, I saw a property go on the market for about 480,000 and it's, you know, under a thousand square feet. It's this tiny little house. And I was like, there is no way this house is going to sell for that price. And it was off the market in about 10 days and it sold for list. Wow. (laughs) 
I just think it's, you know, so you do our local market coverage. So every, you know, uh, every time we have a magazine come out, you're, you're looking, uh, you call up real estate agents around the country. You're looking at these kind of trends and you spotlight different ones. I think the interesting thing is that it's not always in the places that we expect. Of course, you know, we know like South, South, uh, South Florida is going to be huge, right? We know places in, in California, but oftentimes these are places that you don't think about just like in the pandemic where it's like, why is that being so, so hot? And um, it's pretty amazing how widespread that, that is right now. Absolutely. Yeah. There's some really interesting different housing market pockets across the country and, you know, places that you don't necessarily think of. And I mean, that's why I enjoy doing that column is, you know, getting the chance to look at and highlight some of these different markets, because it is fun to kind of take a cross section of the country and, you know, look at what's happening in some very different markets. I do think that's really interesting. Um, you know, any listeners who want to uh, look up the housing market tracker, that's our that's our weekly look. And we look at not only overall inventory, but we look at new listing weekly data. And the reason we do that, obviously, is to see like this is a forward looking report, like what's coming on the market, what can be sold. Right. Um, and that information has been really interesting so new listing data for this week in May <clears throat> over the past three years. So so this year it's at 62,000. Last year, 73,000. 2021, 71,000. If you go back into like normal times, like before the pandemic and all that, we're looking at 90,000, 82,000, 98,000. So it's just, it's just a very small number. And until we see some of that change, we're not going to see affordability really happen. And really just volume is low. Certainly, yeah. The there's not a lot of homes coming on the market right now, and at least in the with the agents that I spoke to out in California, the big issue is that the math just doesn't add up right now. So, a lot of people are locked in at you know two and three quarter percent or three percent mortgage rates, and unless they have a major life event like a divorce, a death in the family, a new addition, maybe you know elderly parents or uh, extended family are moving in, there's not a reason to move or, you know, moving across the country for a job opportunity or something like that. They're, they're not listing. And then talking to other agents, there's also, if you're looking to move locally, you know, if I list my home, it'll probably sell pretty quickly, but where am I going to go? Because there are so few homes on the market and that's, you know, something else that's holding a lot of these potential sellers back right now. Um, And, you know, unless more inventory comes to market, um, that probably won't change. I mean, some agents are feeling that eventually people will just get, you know, if they had been wanting to move out of their neighborhood for a while, they'll just finally get sick of it and say, you know what, maybe the math doesn't add up right now. Um, And you guess I'll be taking on a higher mortgage rate. But you know, I want to move and I can always refinance. And so I think a lot of agents are thinking that might start happening if rates stay where they are in the next, you know, 18 months to two years. Yeah, it's a great point. And, you know, we know that this volume, obviously it affects lenders, it affects real estate agents. It also affects title companies. And we just had, you know, their earnings reports come out for all the big four. Would love for you to walk us through what that looked like. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, so understandably, the first quarter of the year definitely resulted in weaker financial results for um, all of the big four title companies um, because, you know, order volume was down. um, You know, in some of instances, it was down 30, 40 percent year over year. So it was, you know, sizable decreases. Um, All four of the companies, so that's First American, Stewart, Old Republic, and Fidelity National Financial, um, they all recorded year-over-year decreases in revenue, um, you know, roughly between 20 and um, I think about 35%. Um, and then everyone besides Stewart recorded a net income. Um, Stewart did record a net loss of $8.2 million, but the three other firms that all recorded net incomes, it was much smaller um, than the year before which, you know, obviously 
the first quarter of 2022 was a historic quarter for many of these title firms and many you know firms across the uh, real estate landscape um, with you know record inventory or near or record revenue or near record revenue um, and you know it's hard to compare to that but obviously this this was a weaker quarter because we did have a strong decrease in the number of orders opened. Um, Fidelity did have a decently strong quarter. Um, Revenue was only down about 22%, and they did generate a net income of $59 million, which is down from $400 million in Q1 of 2022. But um, one thing that they did do to cut back on expenses was in Q4 of 2022, they laid off 26% of their staff and then had an additional 2% staff reduction during the first quarter of the year, um, which brought down their um, staffing costs in their title segment alone by about 23% year over year. Um, And executives obviously said that that was a very challenging decision. And Fidelity is, 100, is uh, over 175 years old, and this was the largest staffing cut that they've ever undergone. Um, but, you know, by doing so, they were able to, you know, record a pretty strong quarter. So interesting. You and I were both um, at the Alta uh, title conference in the fall. And, you know, just in meeting with a lot of title agents, you know, of course, um, single family residences is a big part of their business, but it's not the only one. And we met people who were branching out and doing different things. Absolutely. I mean, there was a lot of refinance activity, obviously, when mortgage rates were low and that dropped off considerably. Um, The companies that did report uh, their refinance volumes, it was decreases of, you know, anywhere from 65 to 80 percent year over year um, with refinance order volume. But a lot of them are also, you know, doing HELOCs. There's one uh, title company, Res Title, out in Warwick, Rhode Island, that services uh, the entire country. And they were seeing a lot of HELOC volume about six months ago. And I pretty sure that's still the case because a lot of people right now, instead of, you know, purchasing a new home or, uh, yeah, looking at something new without, with very little inventory on the market, they're looking at, uh, renovating or doing an addition on their current property and, you know, looking to potentially tap into equity to do so. Well, Brooklyn, thanks for keeping an eye on the real estate part, especially the local markets and also title for us. Really appreciate it and, and love your coverage. Of course. Thanks for having me.